Welcome to Book Huddle. I'm so excited to have on an author who I recently read her book. She writes young adult and I read the the war's ending. This is AJ Park and I'm trying to remember if there's a the. <laughs> is there's no the, but that's okay. There's no that. All right. War's ending. There we <laughs> go. And it is launch week for Anne. And so launch week for the ring keeper. So I'm really excited yes. to talk about this new book you have out. I, I tell me about it. Like I'm brand new because really I actually haven't read about it. We scheduled right. our interview and I didn't know that the new book was coming. And if you love, if you love the other book, you'll love it too. So I'm yes. excited for you to read it. You'll have to read it and tell me what you think and tell me if you, anyway, what you like. Or do it. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> so oh. Um, I thought it would be interesting to write a book, you know, the wheels turn. I'm like, well, what would happen if you had an enchanted ring that could heal any injury? Um, and so that was kind of one of the, the premises of the book that I, I, I just thought I would explore that. But if you use this power, then you fall into like a coma for three or four days and then you're incapacitated for another wow. few days. So, so we didn't want it to be free. Like it has a cost to it. Cost. And All magic comes with a cost. Exactly. Exactly. That's important. And you can't do it every day. Um, and so. This... So you like, you know, when the ring user goes to use the ring, they know this will happen or is this a surprise? Well, the first time it was a surprise, Okay, but after that, then it wasn't a surprise, but it was still definitely, you know, a result of using that. Okay. So we just kind of, I developed a story where that's kind of the hinge pin where that particular piece of magic is a key uh, player in, um, I, I had, I, I thought it would also be fun. I have a, a set of twin brothers that you know, they started out really liking each other, but things went badly. And so now they're kind of rule, ruling opposing kingdoms. Okay. And uh, the one obviously wants to take out the other. And so yes. he's um, trying to use the power of this magical ring to like, to basically to win this contest between these. So is it like good and evil, like on the school for good and evil, you know, you have the two brothers. I don't know if you've read that or some movie. It's, but you know, like I did complete opposing or is it just like different points of view and not necessarily they're, one good, one bad? they're a little too opposing for sure. Like they're they're okay. opposing. And okay. I don't know. It's a little literal, I know, but like it's straightforward. Good, bad. Right. So okay. if you're OK with that, that's good. Yes. Let's keep going. Even though we know people in the real world are very rare. are very vague, but you yeah, know it all works. Good or all bad, I mean, but... school for good and evil was hugely successful. Good, bad. It's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we're writing over oh, writing fantasy here, and so right. I think those kinds of themes are pretty common. Yes. Um, the struggle between good and evil is a very common theme in in fantasy, and so hopefully right. it's okay that you know the good guy's really good and the bad guy's really bad. So hey, it makes it easy. <laughs> okay, we know who to root for. Yes, I'm going to move forward and write another story that's a little bit more complex with the division of um, okay. good and bad, but that's not this story. So anyway, okay, but will that be a sequel? Will there be a sequel for this book? Um, this I would love to write a sequel, but I have like one page of notes, so it will be a while. Okay. All right. So you'll have to wait just a little bit because I really wrapped things up in this story. Like, okay. So I, it could, it could just always be a standalone. It's Yes, it needs, I mean, I could write a story with the same theme and the continuing characters or something, but it would be right. a whole new story. Because I don't know about you, but that is one of my pet peeves in fantasy, is that every time I pick up something, I'm like, oh, that looks good. And then you find it's the fourth book in the 12th, yes. whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you can never find right. everything in order. And so I love me a standalone book. It has a beginning and a middle and it has an end. And you yes. can just really enjoy the ending. But that doesn't mean nothing else will ever happen, but okay. it just means that this has a conclusion. Excellent. Excellent. So, or maybe something just within the same world, but it didn't right. need to you know, seem to start off. I'm developing some thoughts. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Excellent. The thoughts of a writer. How do you keep <laughs> your thoughts organized? Like when you are developing different stories, do you, did you start with the magic system? Cause you said you had the story of the ring or did you start with the brothers? How do you develop that? You're, I guess this I story, I guess I just asked two questions, didn't I? How do you right. keep your thoughts organized and how do you develop the story? Let's start with yes. the first one. Okay. How do you keep your thoughts organized as a writer? Well, that is something I've definitely struggled with because I have a huge imagination and I started a lot just writing things in notebooks, you know, just like a right. 
so now in my house, there's like a hundred notebooks. And seriously, I had a section of story I was looking back through and I never found it again. So <laughs> they're not um, searchable, like, like on like the computer. On the you computer cannot, right. Yeah. So I'm trying to stay away from that. So I've moved to doing like a binder, which I've actually got one on my desk anyway, like oh, cool. a binder for each. Nice. Uh, book in progress because then you can make notes on the map and you can make notes nice. on the the development but then I'm trying really hard to just um keep things online and keep them organized because right. at the very least if I lose something I can search for it right and so but I do I have a giant box of notebooks I don't recommend <laughs> this system to anyone right <laughs> um but I don't know there's something to be said for Letting just curling up in free. the chair with a notebook, just like something yeah. to be said of a hard copy book, but sometimes just it's to, nice. to. So I have a lot of first drafts that were just notebooks. Uh -huh. And so there's probably 12 to 15 notebooks that pertain to the ring keeper. Right. And it's kind of funny that the story started, it's, it's like a 12 page short story and it has the whole plot kind of, or at least a mini version of it. And that's how it started is that okay. I thought it would be really interesting. Um, I thought that the, the, the villain would connect with another world and find some magic way to bring demons into being that would serve him. And so, of course, um, he sends them after the people with the rings, so they, they are um, trying to get away. And that, that plot element is still there, but it started very small, and it grew up to a book that's 500 pages long, so obviously we added a lot of detail from the the 12 page short story that we started with. But again, I don't necessarily recommend that as a book development plan either <laughs> because that that just kind of contained the the core of the idea. Okay. It wasn't a book by any means. So All right. All right, well that's great. So let's talk about War's Ending because that's the one that I've read. And okay. so I love, I love the characters in Moore's ending. How did you, let's talk about how that, that came about. Like, did you start, because the magic system, it's a very simple magic system, mm -hmm. but you know, it's it very, it's profound. Really like it's earthy. not simple to them. It's very you right. know important to them, but it's very simple. So, you know, I'd say light fantasy for anybody who doesn't like a lot of, you know, heavy magic, right? Def definitely not. Like it barely, it just has like a little bit of a touch in and it's really yeah. earthy and really, um, you know, it's, it's, it's embedded in their culture, but it's not like nobody's waving wands or right. casting. Right. Yes. I could anything. almost, yes. I could see it be, being almost about of culture and yes, of the, mm -hmm. of the elements. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that kind of was the core of the idea with that one. Like, I thought it would be really interesting um, to write a culture. The, one of the key points is that they don't show their faces to outsiders. Right. And so that was kind of a key point of the idea. How would you respond when you meet a culture like that? What would what assumptions would you make about them? Because they don't allow people to see their faces. And there's there's kind of an assumption that they must be up to no good or that, right. you know, they're well, why, hiding yeah. something bad. Right. And so I was trying to play on that and then um, just add in, well, that's not really, they're not really hiding anything bad. They're hiding something that's really special to their culture. And that's where the magic is. They're hiding their, their magical secret powers a little bit. Right. And so not so much secret powers, but they're, they're anyway. They're yeah, they're magic. So, the, right. they're, I keep wanting to say words, but I feel like it'll be a spoiler. <laughs> And so, I know, right. We don't want to give away too much, but, yes. but the point was we wanted to explore the interaction between cultures and, um, you know, what, what assumptions would you make about people yes. because they refuse to reveal their features. And right. anyway, that's kind of, that was the core, the core idea of the story. And then, yeah. And so, to... so oh, in War's ending, we've got this beautiful young woman on the cover. She comes and, you know, she's, intrigued and she's interested in this new land and she doesn't even realize about this other culture at first and so definitely her and then this young man from the other culture who um the hide the face guy he is also a very very compelling character these two strong characters so how tell me how you developed these characters how did you go about did you just start writing or was it your goal to make them a certain way? And was there, you know, obstacles in getting them to that point? Well, there was definitely 
they're they're meant to be like a figurehead for each of their cultures right. for sure so that development kind of happened along the way and then I really, you know, I'm probably not going to do this as much going forward in my writing, but I really did just start writing. Yes. I <laughs> I just started writing. And, you know, that's a big debate in the writing world. Well, do you plan everything out first or do you just start writing? And, you know, as I began writing, I just started writing. And so, but the problem is, is that then I have to go back and fix a bunch of things in the story, like, oh, the pacing didn't work right, or the ending didn't come out, come out correctly. And so I've decided going forward that I am going to plan more, but I have to have some kind of a draft or a seed of an idea. Right. Otherwise I'm bored and then I yes. don't actually do it. Because you, you need to put emotion. And that's what I can see that with what you were saying that you just started writing because like I said they're so compelling there's so much emotion behind the character and so I think that's where it's good for a writer to just write because right you just put yourself into it that emotion mm -hmm. into each of them yeah I think that's the goal is hopefully you can do both things at the same time at the same time hopefully right. you can plan a little anyway we'll see as you yourself have been developing as a writer Right. So is War's Ending, because this is your first published book, was War's Ending, correct? Yes. So is War's Ending your first um, story that you fully felt like you developed all the way before you published? Or were there others that either you'll get back to or you finish them and just aren't going to get back to? So I have a complete manuscript that right. I started at the tender age of like 15 Nice. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you this, but that's been quite a few years by now. <laughs> but, you know, um, so it's still sitting there. Is right. it publishable as is? No. <laughs> no. But would you want to get back to that story? I actually really do. Because yeah. in spite of, well, I just really didn't know how to put a novel together very well. Of course. Of course. And right. so. I mean, but, short of Christopher Paolini, who. <laughs> Right. Which teenager publishes a book. Yeah. But I mean, you know, life happened in the meantime and, yes. you know, I'm no longer a teenager. My kids are teenagers. And so there you go. But um, I would absolutely love to get back to it. And so what I have done is um, I want to take the elements of the story that I really liked because yes. it had some really good points. Yes. But then I don't know. I, I had this tragic story in there where the leading man falls in love with this girl and actually marries her. And then yes. she, she dies. Oh. And then, and I'm like, I need to unkill her. <laughs> How do you we know? do this? So I don't know. I, How much will it affect of, the story if she's not? Right. <laughs> Cause he does some things as a result of that situation. Yeah. That he oh, okay. needs to do in order to move what, the story forward. But what can anyway. still lead him to do these important or significant things? Right. Okay. So long story short, I would like to make that into a, a new story just based yes. on the original. I am not trying to take anything over. I'm just going to take like the outline and some of the really good points and some of the things that I really was fascinated by and still am. Because yes. even I can still go back and read through that book like as myself, mm -hmm. just a reader, I can go through and read it and be like, wow, yeah. it yeah. has some really it has some really good right. moments in it, but but it definitely needs a lot of work. So I'm, I'm going to work on that and. That's very I relatable. I think, you know, I have manuscripts and just anytime you go back and read through, you're like, yes, I am a good writer. And then <laughs> other points, it's like, I am not. Exactly. So That's what, happened to me so many what times. Can I pick? <laughs> or I have a really bad memory. So once in a while, I'll pick something up and be like, I wonder how it ends. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or, Ooh, so, pretty <laughs> good. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm working on that. Excellent. And then there's a couple of other um we actually have a mutual friend and she's somebody that I've run a lot of ideas by. So I'm like, what do you think? Do you like this one? Um, I oh yes. Our cakes by Alyssa. We'll put her link yes. in the description too. Yes, absolutely. She is an amazing, uh, an amazing friend to like listen right. to all my ideas. And so we came up with the idea. Um, I, I'd like to write a book where the, the same character is both the hero and the villain. Yes. So uh, we'll, we'll have to let me know if we pull that off. So she is that, actually the only person that's that read the rough great. draft of this. Oh. Like she is the only person in the world. So I've got yeah. a whole list of her feedback and I'm going to go back and keep working Wonderful. on Wonderful. I think, yeah, I writer's just, groups are so important. To, right. You know, I thought that would be so ones. fun to just, um, to just have the same character be the good yes. guy and the bad guy. Wonderful. 
Excellent. Well, after it passes beta reader and gets closer, that's that will be excellent to find out. Yeah, you'll um, have to check out if you want to check out. We, yes. can, we can talk later. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. now War's Ending does have a sequel in the works, right? It's just not quite published yet. There will be a sequel to War's Ending? Um, There will be eventually. There's a eventually. So it's... Out, so. Okay. Okay, so we've got The Ringkeeper, we've got War's Ending, and Ringkeeper also young adult, yes? Uh, Yes. It's, okay. it's maybe a little older, I would say, but it's still... Okay, maybe even new adult? Yeah, okay. but we'll probably still, I think it's still labeled as young adult. Young adult. It covers yeah. a range because I would say anybody that's a teenager up through grown ups. Right. Okay. Right. So, and this is one of AJ Park's things is she writes clean young adult because there's so much out there. You just want to know that you can pick up and right. feel good about giving it to your teen or yourself without. Right. And I just, um, well, I definitely make sure I don't have a lot of foul language in it because right. to be honest, I think that's a little ridiculous in fantasy because the words that you use pertain to the culture that you live in. Right. And if you're in a different culture, then, you know, the, the bad right. words don't have the same meaning. And so uh, anyway, so I definitely don't do that. And I also don't want to have inappropriate scenes in there. Although I would say there's some, the, the ring keeper, I would say we created this magic ring that can heal anything. So right. I will say that there's some things in there that I wouldn't have written doing to characters if if they couldn't come back from it, which I know that's kind of a terrible plot element, but <laughs> I'm sorry. So I kind of took license to make some terrible things happen that I wouldn't have done otherwise. Okay, okay. But I don't know that I'll, I don't think I'll go that direction again, but okay. anyway, but All still, right. I've still tried to make it uh, still be appropriate because I don't want to, I don't want to write something that that I'm not comfortable. What yes. if my mom reads it? You know, what if my, <laughs> my daughters read it? You know, I don't, I don't want right. um, to, I want to feel be, good. Yeah. Comfortable talking about other times with other people and not be yeah. like, Oh, you read that. Right. How was it? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. I don't want to be one of those books that you have to whisper to your friend that you read because you don't want to say it out loud. Right. Right. So as an author, I bet you, especially since you're a young adult and you have your own kids, that you have some kind of children's book that you like. I love to have everybody recommend a children's book. What can you oh, recommend for us? Absolutely. So I actually have a copy of one of my very favorite kids books and Excellent. it's very old. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. We do this. All right. Cowardly Clyde and Bill, by Bill Pete. Bill Is Pete. that right? Okay. Right. And he wrote a whole bunch of books. And um, that one is just my favorite because I guess- Is it from when you were a child? Be, what? Is it from when you were a child or when you're oh, kids? Oh yeah, were... these are okay. pretty old books. If you, um, Bill Pete actually, I mean, he's a wonderful, wonderful illustrator Okay. and a great writer. Like, I think he worked on some of the old Disney movies. Oh. If you go back, like the, um, the Sword and the Stone, which okay. that was, very many years old but it's still a super cute movie but I'm oh yeah sure you can see his art influence in that movie if you look closely Excellent. and I read these I read them when I was a kid and then I read that one to my kids they all remember I mean it is just it's a wonderful story so it's a picture book right can you show us the inside yes. all right let's see oh yes well let's see if we can so you've got the ogre oh I love the ogre the, the brave knight that that fights the ogre and it's told from the, it, Clyde is the horse. So <laughs> ah, that's so excellent. He, he talks about how yeah, the, the horse the just is not brave, but this knight is, you know, spectacularly brave to right. his detriment. Like he would not have made it through the book without his horse, who has a lot more common sense than he does, which is why it's such a fun story. So really what happens Absolutely. is the knight, you know, bravely goes after the monster and it kind of right. goes badly. And so his horse has to kind of rescue him. And uh, they agree at the end that nobody will ever like know what really happened. So it is a wonderful story. So I would recommend that not for oh, tiny kids. For okay. Sure. Um, you need to be so able to upper know. elementary or maybe like, I don't know. Second, I would say if you're five or six at least. Oh, okay. Okay. Seven or eight. So just not, te not babies, not teeny kids. All right. Well, uh, I'm excited to look that up. That sounds right. like fun. And I like the different perspective, the strengths that both 
individuals in the story can bring because right. even though they're so opposing you don't need two heroes you need two people to support each other in right. their differences and bring out each other's strengths and weaknesses right and his use of language is so fun like that's my kids still remember it just because he uses you know some words that aren't real words and just <laughs> you know adjust things a little so they sound really funny and excellent anyway so excellent. it's definitely entertaining to adults as well so I think that's really fun. important because there's nothing yes. worse than a kid book that is boring to the poor adult who has to read it. Right. And then it just <laughs> goes on and on. Or, right. And the ponies and the fairies pranced around and there was hardly <laughs> any story. This is what I recently read. And I was like, oh, I hated that. <laughs> you know, there's nothing better Painful. than a kid's book that's actually entertaining. So I really enjoy, and he's he's written dozens and dozens of books, and there are all yeah. sorts of different, some of them have more of a fantasy, like they have yeah. some mythical creatures in them, and some of them are like cities that are more urban looking that are, you know, Fun. I mean, he's got all sorts of different ones, and there's always just a little bit of magic in it, and a little bit, so it's, it's a wonderful, he's a great author, I mean, I, I'm not sure what the publication date on that is, I guess, quick look. It's probably pretty old because I'm not even sure if he's around. Well, that's so fun. And I haven't even heard of him. So I can't wait to look him up and probably because it's my kids old. So this version is well, 1979. Ooh, it's older than me. Ooh, sadly, not older than me. But oh, just that's, okay. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's okay. Getting kind of close. <laughs> it's not that much older than me. I'll say that. Right, right. Time flies, doesn't it? it yes. Does. Oh, yes, for sure. All right. Well, excellent. I'm so excited to check out that book, and I can't wait to get my hands on The Green Keeper. I, I read War's Ending on um, Kindle Unlimited, so I'm assuming uh -huh. The Green Keeper's yes. on. Excellent. It is on Kindle Unlimited, so if you've got that, you could. it's available right now. Right now. In fact, it's still on sale um, for a couple more days. I, I don't know when we'll post this video, but Right. Uh, once in a while we do have a sale on it and then if you're on kindle unlimited you can just get it anytime excellent well so. and you know i i'm not an affiliate yet but so i don't get anything benefits from this but kindle unlimited is always doing like i got four months free and i think that was one of the best that i've seen um and that's how i read wars ending i'm still in my four free months and so well that's um, awesome and they kindle unlimited will always do like in the very least i'm sure you can get on and get a month free and I try to run a sale every once in a while but yeah. even so an ebook's not expensive anyway right. if you know you're going to like it it's just a few bucks and even if it's right. regular price it's not expensive so well excellent well thank you so much Anne for being on today check out AJ Park I'm going to put in the description down here we will have a web her website and then the links for how you can purchase her books so definitely and thanks check for having me on I appreciate it yes <laughs> goodbye bye